Hi, and welcome to AP Chemistry Exam Review. It's me, Dr. V, and I'm here to help you get ready for the AP Chemistry exam in May. So today, we're going to work on free response question number seven from the 2019 release exam. This was one of the short free response questions, and it was scored out of four points. I always recommend that students work through the problem on their own before they listen to my solution. If you sit down to do the whole problem in one session, it should take you eight to 10 minutes to complete. Um, that's how much time you would have in a typical AP Chemistry exam for a short question. You'll need your calculator and your periodic table and your formula sheet to do the problem. And try to have the whole solution worked out before you listen to my answer key, or alternatively, do a part, listen to my explanation, do the next part, and so on. Um, but either way, try to do it on your own first. That really will help you to get a good feel as you listen to my explanation and keep track of your score as you go, whether you're writing down enough information to fully demonstrate your knowledge, whether you need to go back and revisit a topic and learn the material in a little more detail, and really get a grasp on where you are in terms of your development as an AP Chemistry student. So let's jump right into the problem. It's a titration problem. We've got a redox reaction. A student dissolved a 0.139 gram sample of oxalic acid, or given the formula, in water in an Erlenmeyer flask. Then the student titrated the oxalic acid solution with a solution of potassium permanganate, which has a dark purple color. It's a really beautiful color, really nice, very vivid. The balanced chemical equation is given here. Okay, so part A says, identify the species that was reduced in the titration reaction. Justify your answer in terms of oxidation numbers. So hopefully you know all your oxidation number rules. If you don't, I've got a webcast and we can link that in. So we, we want to find the species that was reduced. We want to find the species that starts with a higher oxidation number and goes to a lower oxidation number because it gained electrons. That's what it means to undergo reduction. So we're going to start with the hydrogens. Now they're either hydrogen ions for the H plus from the, um, or they're hydrogen atoms in compounds. For all of them, the oxidation number would be plus one. We don't have any hydrides and we don't have any elemental hydrogen, so plus one for the oxidation numbers for all the hydrogens. Now let's go through and think about the oxygens. Again, we don't have any elemental oxygen and we don't have any peroxides, and so the oxidation number of oxygen in all of these species would be minus two. So they're not changing at all. So the only elements that haven't changed would be manganese and carbon. We need to find out which one has an oxidation number that goes down. So let's start by assigning the oxidation number for manganese in the permanganate ion on the reactant side. I've got uh, a negative charge of minus one. The sum of all the oxidation numbers has to be minus one for this species. I've got four oxygens, each with an oxidation number of minus two. And therefore the manganese in the permanganate has to have an oxidation number of plus seven. Okay, if we look at the manganese species on the product side, it's a monatomic ion. And the oxidation number of a monatomic ion is its charge, and therefore the manganese on the product side has an oxidation number of plus two. Well, it went from plus seven to plus two. So that's really our answer right there. The manganese in permanganate ion got reduced. It went from plus seven to plus two. That's what you need to write down to earn the point for this part of the question, right? We don't need to assign the oxidation numbers for the carbon in order to get to our answer here. Of course, you might have done that as a check for yourself, but I found I didn't need to go any further, so I'm not going to. All right, let's go on. The student used a 50.0 milliliter puree to add the potassium permanganate to the oxalic acid solution. We, and this was added until a faint lavender color was observed in the flask. That's because permanganate can act as its own indicator. All right, when you have excess permanganate, you end up with a pale pink color because of the Mn2 plus ions that form. All right, and so that's how you know you reach the end point of the titration. And then we've got pictures of the burets before and after. So the question says, write down the initial reading, write down the final reading, find out, calculate the volume of potassium permanganate solution that was dispensed from the buree during the titration. So let's look at the initial buree. All right, so you look at the bottom of the meniscus, and one thing that students sometimes forget with burets, the zero point for the buree is at the top of the buree. You read a buree down, all right? And so when I'm looking at the bottom of the meniscus, my answer should be bigger than three, but less than four, all right? And specifically, it would be 3.35 milliliters. It's marked to a tenth of a mil on the buree. And so I can estimate 
to the hundredths place, so 3.35 milliliters for my initial Bure reading. For my final Bure reading, right, again, I'm looking at the bottom of the meniscus, all right, I'm reading down the Bure, so my answer is bigger than 29, but smaller than 30, and um, looking at the bottom of the meniscus there, it's halfway between 0.5 and 0.6, so I'm going to report that as 29.55 milliliters. What I need is the difference between them, so I need to subtract the initial reading from the final reading, and that's my volume, 26.20 milliliters. Um, another thing that students often forget when they're doing these problems is sig figs when you're subtracting. It's not about how many sig figs, it's about the place. Since both of my measured initial and final volumes were reported to the hundredths place. When I report the difference, it's also reported to the hundredths place. So 26.20 milliliters, and that's what your answer needed to be to earn the point. Okay, so let's go on to part C. We're given the concentration of the potassium permanganate solution that was used. We're told it's 0.0235 molar. Calculate the number of moles of permanganate ions that reacted. Well, let's think about what we know. We know the molarity, we're just given that. On the previous slide in part B, we had found the volume of permanganate solution that was used, right? So we know a molarity, we know a volume, from that we can calculate moles, right? We know that molarity is defined as moles of solute over the volume of the solution in meters. I can rearrange this easily to isolate moles of permanganate since that's what I want to solve for. All right, and there's one permanganate in the potassium permanganate, so it's all the same thing. So molarity of the solution times its volume in liters will give me the moles that I want. I do need to make sure I take that volume from part B and convert it to liters to do this calculation. And if I don't do that correctly, I'm going to end up with a funny answer. Um, so watch those units always. All right, so I substitute that in and I get an answer of 0 0.000616 moles of potassium permanganate. Okay. That's great. That's how many moles of permanganate were used. And that's what I needed to have for one point. I needed to have the work to back it up. So it's not so much that I wrote down the formula. It's not that I was required to show the rearrangement, but I do have to have work that supports my answer. That's very important here. And let's go on to the last part of this question. The student proposes to carry out another titration, again, using a 0.139 gram sample of oxalic acid. But this time, the concentration of the potassium permanganate solution is considerably lower, 0 0.00143 molar. Would this be a reasonable choice for the titration if we're using the same procedure and the same equipment? All right, so that's a really important point here because that would be the same bure. Justify your response. So you need to use math-based reasoning for your answer. And I think there's definitely more than one way to approach this problem. I'm going to show you what I did, but that doesn't mean there aren't other logical ways to back up your answer. There certainly are. So what I chose to do was to solve for the volume of potassium permanganate solution I would need to neutralize, to react completely with the 0.139 gram sample of oxalic acid. All right, so I'm going to convert my mass of oxalic acid to moles of oxalic acid. And then if I go all the way back to the original problem, I get the mole ratio, five moles of oxalic acid to two moles of potassium permanganate, all right? And then for this volume of, um, for this molarity of potassium permanganate solution, I know that there were that many moles of potassium permanganate in one liter or 1,000 milliliters of solution, all right? So I can calculate that out and get 432 milliliters. Now, remember in the previous problem in part B, we used 26 milliliters. This is a huge, huge uh, increase in the volume of potassium permanganate solution that I would need to use. And I would say that under these circumstances with a 50 mil bure, that would not be a reasonable concentration to use to carry out this titration. I'd have to refill my bure nine times and keep track of all that to reach the equivalence point of the titration. That's just not <laughs> useful at all. Keeping track of it nine times, you you forget. It's not reasonable. All right, so this is how I chose to back it up. There are other ways to get to the same idea, but you do need to have math-based reasoning. All right, so how did you do? The average score on this question in 2019 was 1.78 out of four points. So most students earned two points. They got two parts of the four correct. Um, 
I definitely think part D was the most challenging part in terms of the reasoning you need, needed to do here. Parts A and B and C were really pretty manageable. So getting two points, that's reasonable. If you got three points, you're doing well. If you got all four points, kudos to you and you're in really good shape. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Have a great day and keep studying AP Chem.